Welcome to IdeaGen TV. Today I am ecstatic to have with us Dr. Siddhant Gupta, Director of Microsoft's Premonition. Siddhant, welcome. Thank you, George. Always a pleasure to be on IdeaGen TV. So good to you see know, you. It's, it's so great to see you, Siddhant. And I know you're in Seattle and you're changing the world in so many different ways. And I'd love to start right in with this interview to ask you to describe what you're doing at Microsoft. What are some of your plans for 2023? Yeah, um, I, I like how you put it. We're changing the world. Um, uh, we'll be humble. We're, we're trying to. We're trying to have a huge impact on how we understand nature, biome, and what, what's happening in the nature. So I'm glad you asked what, what we are doing with Microsoft Premonition and what are our plans for 2023. So a quick overview, Microsoft Premonition is, is, is a set of couple groundbreaking technologies. I'm gonna focus on just two, particularly a device that goes in the field and can sample the environment. Uh, it's called a Microsoft Premonition Trap and Metagenomics Pipeline that helps us understand what that sample is about. So as humanity, I mean, this just doesn't need any more introduction thanks to the pandemic we just came out of. There's a lot of things in nature that's happening all the time, novel viruses, novel bacteria, or, or, or a new bug that might um, you know, take out a crop for a season. And we as humans, unlike weather stations or unlike uh, traffic cameras have very little insight into what nature is doing at any given time. So that's what we wanted to change. And about six years back, we asked ourselves, just like we can look up traffic and figure out where, where there's some uh, jams on an intersection, we can have a real-time analysis of the traffic flow. Can we do the same for the biome? Can we understand what nature is doing? Uh, if a novel uh, viral infection has made it into, let's say, cow, cow population, how would we know? Or if it's gonna, there's gonna be a zoonotic spillover and it's gonna impact humans, how do we even know that? Well, the answer is we don't yet and we don't have a system like that. And premonition is designed to change that. So when we started, our um, goal was, hey, how can we get a sample, whether that's a blood sample or a genetic sample from different things in nature, plants, mosquitoes, flying insects, humans, mammals, animals, etc. And it turned out that's not an easy problem. But the epiphany was that Mother Nature already has a sensor, so to say, that goes and samples warm blooded animals and mammals and humans, mosquito. So as much as mosquito is a nuisance, it is an absolutely amazing sensor for us. So we built a system that attracts specific species of mosquitoes. So the trap is really smart. It's a smart premonition trap. It sends out lures like CO2. It breathes like an animal. It looks warm like an animal. And it's sending out lures to attract mosquitoes. These mosquitoes may have bitten an animal, a bat, a bird, or a human. And when this mosquito comes close to the trap, we can sense what the species of mosquito is. If it is of interest, we can capture it. Once captured, we can take that mosquito and run it through the second, one of the groundbreaking technologies I talked about, which is metagenomics pipeline. And what that tells us is not just, of course, what is the species of this mosquito in the genetic material? That's not what we are interested in, but whatever is in the guts of this mosquito. So if the mosquito bit a cow and that cow had a novel bovine virus, we can not only see the genetic material of the cow, but also the, you know, the novel viral infection in that uh, cow. And this is a really faint signal. So the reason this is groundbreaking is we, we make use of machine learning and AI technologies, along with a lot of signal processing and biostatistics to get to what a really small amount of DNA material, how do we identify that? And that's, that's metagenomics. So once you start doing this, and once you have a network of these devices out in the world, you can essentially have a dashboard that tells you 
what are some of the you know biological signals what activity is going on in a particular zip code and let's say you keep over and over seeing a novel bovine virus in let's say zip code 98008 which is my zip code now a state government or the federal government can spend their money in that region to sample cows which is a very expensive process it's like thousands of dollars per sample that you spend which is why you cannot just sample the whole planet you need to know where to sample where to look for so it, to, to draw an analogy you're looking for a needle in a haystack or rather you know a tenth of a needle in a haystack and there is a mil, mil, there's millions of haystacks what premonition does is it helps point towards one stack of hay and says go look for the needle in this haystack instead of all millions of haystacks so yeah with premonition it's going going to change how we understand what nature is doing and prevent future pandemics or if not prevent make us warn us as an early warning system of a forthcoming novel virus that may spill over to humans so that's premonition and for 2023 george you asked uh, what are our plans it started off as a science um, endeavor then it turned into a proof of concept and a prototype uh, over the last year we've worked with multiple global partners pharmaceutical companies and state governments to get it out there and this is the year where we take it big and we are now working with certain really large customers for commercial scale deployments of premonition so that's what's forthcoming and you'll see a lot more um, on both LinkedIn and on Microsoft blog that talks about Microsoft Premonition. You know, when we say you're changing the world, we're not kidding, Sidon. I mean, this is uh, yeah, obviously transformational and has incredible implications for, you name it, leading with humanity uh, at the fore of this type of technology and this type of premonition, as you call it, which is really Phenomenal. And I'd like to ask you as a leader, as a leader, as a global leader, how do you then manage your teams with individuals that cross sectors like Microsoft Premonition? That's a great question. Um, <clears throat> Microsoft Premonition, our team um, is truly cross sector. We have entomologists, we have computer scientists, we have electrical and uh, engineers. We have folks who are machine learning statisticians, and then we have business leaders. Uh, so it's truly a cross-discipline, cross-sector style of team. And to be honest, um, I'm fortunate that we don't have to manage it much as a leader. Once we set the right tone for where we are heading, what is the ambition? What is the impact of Microsoft Premonition on the world? What we saw that if you set a clear goal, if you set a clear outcome, and it resonates with the people you hire to work on those problems, generally speaking, we don't find ourselves managing those cross-sector teams or cross-sector individuals. They sort of come together for a single unified mission, which is how do we predict you know, epidemics like we predict together. That's kind of our every day we ask ourselves that. Um, and it's brought everybody together where each person is a domain expert in what they do. So they carve out what needs to be done to forward the agenda. And for the most part, um, we have a really smooth team that works together and solves problem with out of box thinking. Um, so I would say the key thing I have personally observed is setting the right ambition and the right stake in the ground that you're all driving towards. For premonition, that is the public health impact. And on the business side, that's the kind of customers we want to work with so that we can roll out a planet-wide network of Microsoft premonition. And those two are simple but highly ambitious, and we all drive towards it. And so, it's incredible to hear, you know, the impact across sectors, because as you know, at IDHN Global, we are focused on that global cross-sector collaboration and, of course, the global goals of the United Nations. Sidan, how would you describe your leadership style? Yeah, um, 
I like to borrow from the philosophy of servant leaders. Um, I'm not always able to do that, but I strive to be a servant leader. Um, I see myself as not a leader where people have to run ideas by me or approvals by me or ask me for, is this the right way to do it? But rather me working for them so that they are empowered to take the right actions. And I see my job as a leader in removing roadblocks for our teams. Um, the other aspect is I try and lead from empathy. Um, and that's something I, I, I had to recently learn how to do and coach myself. But that's given me a really good perspective of um, looking at individual contributors and the teams within Microsoft Reminition or beyond and, and making decisions that empower them to do their best rather than me telling them how to do, do it best because I, I don't know how to do their job, to be honest. And the final thing I would say is no matter the talent on your team um, is to believe in them, is to not give up on them. Um, I read somewhere, I now forget where, um, but I would quote it, is nobody would come to you at a later stage in life and thank you for not believing in them. And that really stuck with me that that's so true. Like, yes, I may not like this talent, but I have to believe in them because if they do break through and upskill, hopefully one day they can be like, oh yeah, you know, thanks for believing in me. But nobody comes back to you saying thank you for not believing in me. So those are some of the key traits I, I, I try and build into my leadership. Um, but having said that, I am just absolutely lucky and fortunate to be surrounded by individuals who are brilliant self-starters and, to be honest, self-managed. It's really phenomenal to hear this type of leadership that I believe is such a critical part of, you know, helping to form and shape the way you lead. And so who are some of these leaders that you looked up to and how have they impacted you? Yeah, um, a couple names, a uh, couple individuals come to mind. Um, I think some of the early leadership skills or why I got interested in leadership, I picked it up from my dad. Um, he used to run a, um, a small 15 person company. And one of the most amazing things is um, he would like take care of them like family. Um, even to this date, um, and it's been like 20 years, he, he like paid for all of the employees' kids to go to school. And some of these employees were from really low economic and literacy standards. So they had no intention to send their kids to school, but my dad was like, no, you're sending your kids to school and I'm gonna pay for it. So I think that really stuck with me is empathy, giving back and kind of doing good as a leader because you're fortunate to be in a position where you can do that for others. So that's, that's one individual that absolutely comes to my mind that set the foundation. Um, and then second, I had the privilege of observing uh, my, my VP, Desni Tan at Microsoft, who recruited me actually to Microsoft uh, about eight years back now. And he's a phenomenal leader and he leads through empathy and he leads through some of the key principles I talked about is just empowering individuals to do their best. Uh, and he does it just really tactfully and it's almost invisible. So, uh, you know, someday. Uh, maybe I can learn that. And then third, um, <clears throat> right around the time I joined Microsoft, Satya had just taken over. And I had the privilege of like watching the culture kind of change from uh, over, over, over years under, under Satya's leadership. And I loved his leadership style. And, and I'm sure many of you have read his books and, and see, seen his videos and whatnot. But that also had a really good impact on me on, again, leading with empathy, treating individuals for what they are, always believing in them and, and, and just being nice. Maybe that's, that's how I would say it. it's like, as a leader, you have the tough job of maximizing revenue and profits and getting the most out of your team, but you cannot forget that you're dealing with people. 
and their happiness is first and foremost and paramount. And when they are happy, they are productive, then you're automatically maximizing their productivity and hence uh, by extension revenue and gross profits and whatnot. What incredible lessons, Dr. Siddhant Gupta, you have provided here today to those millions of individuals across the planet that will watch this interview, inspiration on your leadership, how you lead with empathy, the examples of people and leaders that have impacted you, including your own father, which I find so incredibly admirable, and also Satya Nadella. And the person at Microsoft who recruited you, Destiny 10. I mean, that's recognition of those who we all stand on the shoulders of is the late, great Lewis Stokes, Honorable Congressman Lewis Stokes, who you know and you um, admire as well. He said to your point of being nice, uh, never mistake being nice for being weak. And it's such a good point. You can still be nice and get your point across. And um, I think that's a lesson for just about everyone today, especially in the in the times that we live um, with a lot of different, you know, um, opinions uh, that are out there. I think it's a good time to to be nice to your point and to lead with empathy. I think that gives us the perspective necessary to um, to get through this life that goes by so quickly. <laughs> and by the way, so your inspiration today, I think, will take so many people forward, and your insights and perspectives so incredibly valuable. Dr. Sidan Gupta, Director of Premonition at Microsoft, thank you so very much. What is your call to action for our global audience today? Yeah, thank you for having me, George. Call to action. Um, it's interesting times, like you said, a lot of uh, opinions all across the spectrum from political to apolitical, um, economic. Um, if I may call it downturn, of course, there's some fog there. I would say my call to action would be if you can survive the downturns and write the uptrends, then you know, you'll survive. And that, in, that's generally shared in business, but I apply it to personal life as well, is resilience, uh, which is, you know, just be resilient. Don't consume all of the negativity. You can still find some positivity. And then upskilling. Maybe try out jobs, skills, or job functions, or take on a task that nobody wants to because, I don't know, it's uncertain. Um, I, I personally have found that I've learned the most when I take on jobs that um, no one was excited to take on around me and it led me in a path of self-discovery figuring things out and building resilience in the end so resilience and upskilling wherever you can find it not just in job but personal life family values everywhere resilience and upskilling your call to action so incredibly inspiring dr Siddhant gupta director of premonition at microsoft Thank you for all you're doing to change the world. Thank you so much, George. Thank you.